China's Three Gorges Dam is the largest and most controversial hydroelectric project in history. Amidst all the negative news about it, the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, has begun an even bigger hydro station that will generate three times the power than the Three Gorges project. On the Yarlung Tsiangpo River on the Tibetan Plateau, there was a proposal for the Muatua hydropower plant. In 2019, Chinese media reported the Muatua hydro plant would be built between 2030 and 2035 and completed by 2045 as a tribute to the 100th year of the communist regime. In late 2020, the CCP announced its 14th five-year plan, a series of plans outlining China's economic and social priorities, in which it mentioned it would seek to develop the hydropower potential of the Yarlong Tsiangpo. On November 26, 2020, the chairman of the Power Construction Corporation of China that built the Three Gorges Dam confirmed such a plan at the 40th anniversary of the China Society for Hydropower Engineering. He emphasized that the project was under implementation, as clearly stated in the document. The Yarlong Tsiangpo is a cross-border river that flows from Tibet into India, known as the Brahmaputra, and then enters Bangladesh as the Jamuna. Many experts believe it could be the riskiest megaproject ever undertaken. It's almost as if the Himalayas are so big and they're so kind of obvious that people don't think about how they, what the effect that they have. Uh, but we're dealing with a, an inland system, a, a hydrological, a geological system that uh, underpins the development of China, Southeast Asia and South Asia's uh, civilizations, cultures, histories, nation states, half the people, uh, almost half the population of the world live in the watershed of this particular uh, mountain range, this particular plateau. So it's a very, it's, it's, it's a, it's probably has the most impact of any inland on the planet. Let's first take a look at the CCP's ambitious plan. The Yarlong Tsiangpo River is the highest major river on Earth, averaging 4,000 meters above sea level. It winds through the remote areas of the eastern Himalayas, making a huge bend near the disputed border with the Indian state of Arunachal Pradesh. In the late 1990s, Chinese scientists who trekked the area claimed that the Yarlong Tsiangpo Grand Canyon was the deepest worldwide, at more than 5,300 meters. It is almost three times the depth of the Grand Canyon in the U.S., from one side of the Yarlung Tsiangpo Grand Canyon to the other, the elevation drops by more than 2,000 meters. That is a steep drop in the river height in a very short time. This discovery has planted a seed in China to build the world's largest hydroelectric power plant. Under this concept, when the water falls sharply to a turbine on the other side of the bend below, it would generate a large amount of energy. According to the chairman of the Power Construction Corporation of China, the canyon has the potential to generate more than 60,000 megawatts of electricity, which is three times the amount of power generated by the Three Gorges Dam. Many believe that although the project's design has not yet been announced, the fact that it is mentioned in the communist government's five-year plan means that there is a very good chance that the project will go ahead in some form. Now, Let's consider in detail the extraordinary risks faced by the project. First of all, the Himalayas are the youngest mountain range on Earth, resulting from the compression of the Indian and ancient Eurasian plates. This process is still ongoing, and this region is therefore prone to earthquakes. In 1950, an 8.6 magnitude earthquake, one of the most intense ever, struck the area, with the epicenter 200 kilometers away in the northeastern Indian state of Assam. At the beginning of last century, there was also a significant earthquake of magnitude 10 in this area. Only there were no measuring instruments at that time, and this magnitude was deduced by scientists after later investigations. Secondly, after the big turn of the Yarlung Tsiangpo River, it enters Bomi County. Then after that, it is the world's largest mudslide group area. Usually, in June and July of every year, there will be a giant mudslide. The Shishuan Tibet Highway is interrupted almost every year for several months. In March 2021, upstream of the Big Bend, a glacier on the Himalayan cliff disintegrated, sending ice and rocks plunging nearly 4 kilometers into the Yarlung Tsiangpo River. Satellite images documented the rising water level in the upper reaches of the Yarlung Tsiangpo River after the incident due to the truncation of part of the river. That landslide occurred upstream of the planned giant hydropower plant in China. 
Earlier this year, a very similar landslide in the Uttarakhand state in the Himalayan region of India temporarily blocked the Rishi Ganga River. When the glacier broke, a torrent of water surged downstream, killing dozens of people and destroying two hydroelectric plants. Some experts believe that there is no way to manage the mudslide problem here. The local river valley is about 2,400 to 500 meters above sea level, but the mountain peaks are 5,000 to 6,000 meters high with glaciers on the mountains. When the weather turns warm, the snow and glaciers on the mountains start to melt. A considerable amount of water, along with mud and rocks, rushes down from 5 or 6,000 meters, packing immense destructive power. Third, at the northern foot of the Himalayas is China's Tibet, and at the southern foot is India, which means complex problems are involved. As a hydroelectric power station, during a large part of the year, the dam has to hold back water to prepare for power generation. From June to August, when there is too much water, the dam releases water. That area in India, such as Kilapunzi in Assam, has an average annual precipitation of 11,437 millimeters. It is one of the highest on the globe and is known as the rain capital of the world. In the summer, when the snow and glaciers melt in the Tibetan mountains, it is also the time when rivers flow the most and hydroelectric stations need to release water. But for India, the precipitation in this season is already a lot. The same is true for Bangladesh, where the Ganges Delta, the worst flooded area globally, is due to too much rainfall during the rainy season. If the Chinese hydro station releases water during the rainy season, there might be unimaginable consequences. In addition, the Brahmaputra River in India has an annual runoff of about 450 billion cubic meters by the time it reaches the Bangladesh border, of which 165 billion is from the Yarlung Tsiangpo River, accounting for 37%, which is vital to this region of India. If China stops the water upstream, especially when Chinese hydrological information is not open and transparent, India would be deeply troubled. Like the upper Mekong River, it originates in China. China has built more than a dozen dams on the Mekong River, but the hydrological resources such as water storage, water release, and changes in the amount of water upstream are not disclosed, and downstream countries such as Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam depend on Beijing's charity for their water supply. The CCP claims that the reason for this project is to achieve the noble goal of carbon neutrality by 2060. Is that so? The Tibet Autonomous Region has 1.2 million square kilometers of vast mineral resources. The Chamdo Rural Region, for example, has the third largest copper mine in the world. In addition, Tibet has chromite, which is almost lacking in China, and rare earths and gold and silver mines. The mining of copper and other non-ferrous metals requires a lot of power, yet Tibet has no coal mines nor petroleum, so hydropower seems the only feasible option. Another thing worth mentioning is that the CCP may hope to utilize the Yarlung Zhangbo River by directing its water to northern China with the help of a hydroelectric facility. China has been implementing the South-North Water Diversion Project with the East, Central, and West lines. The Eastern and Central lines have been under construction for many years. The Western Route Project is less frequently mentioned by the Chinese media. The core of the Western Route Project is to channel water into the Yellow River. The CCP might possibly send some of the water from the Yarlung Tibet River to the Yellow River Basin through a large pipeline that will then enter northern China. The 165 billion cubic meters of outbound runoff of the Yarlung Tibet River is three times the flow of the Yellow River into the sea. Just sending one-third of the water of the Yarlung Tibet River across would be equivalent to doubling the volume of the Yellow River, and that would completely change the environment in northern China. This idea has long been put forward by Chinese communist experts. Now, it seems no longer an impossibility. If the Yarlung Tsiangpo River is included in the western route of the South-North Water Diversion Project, then the water resources of India and some other countries will be significantly affected. Throughout human history, there have been many wars over land, people, and water. Will Beijing start a water war in the future? Furthermore, some Chinese experts are worried that the project will destroy the local ecological environment, thus creating an irreversible disaster. The lower Yarlung Tsiangpo River, where the hydropower development project is located, is in the core area of the Yarlung Tsiangpo Grand Canyon. It is a national-level nature reserve in China. 
According to Chinese law, no production facilities can be built in the core and buffer zones of the nature reserve. Chinese scientists have praised the Yarlung Zhangbo Grand Canyon as such. The Yarlung Zhangbo Grand Canyon is a complete natural museum, which is called by scientists as the center of the origin of species, the activation area of climate and environmental evolution, and the natural gene pool of biodiversity, which concentrates more than half of the biological species on Earth and is the most promising area for the development and utilization of biological resources in China as well as the ideal place to save and breed endangered species. Although many people do not realize it, the destruction of biodiversity on Earth is seen by some experts as one of the major crises that threaten humanity, along with asteroid strikes and nuclear war. But this one, in the eyes of Beijing, is probably not a risk at all.